one of the most controversial figures I've ever had on this show. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, you've had furries. You've I've had, had Mia Khalifa, who was kind of controversial in her own ray. Flat Earthers. I think you might be more controversial than Flat Earthers. That could be. Why are you so controversial? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I think it's like a lot of unregulated <laughs> confidence. You have unregulated confidence? Yeah, I think I have in the past. I've toned yeah. it down a bit. So is that a good thing? Oh, yeah, and of course. It's, it, and he's right. I'm, it's really cool that he admits it. Um, he's right. Um, I think all of these male creators, and I think, again, not that it doesn't happen with female creators. I think the reality is that the internet is just very misogynistic in general. So female creators get called out for everything all the time. Literally everything all the time. Like it's, it, it's, it's not easy to end up with like a big ego as a female content creator. In fact, most female content creators, most big female content creators do not have big egos because they're constantly being put down by the internet for silly shit. But on YouTube, as a YouTube content creator, you usually are not interacting with your fans. And, um... It's very easy to just become like this person with like a gigantic ego. Um, I think when he says that this that this is the most one of the most controversial guests, he doesn't mean controversial in like th the general term controversial in like bringing him on just alone bringing Idubs onto his channel will cause controversy. I think that's what he means. That like he can bring on flat earthers and his audience will be like, oh, well, look at these flat earthers are so dumb or whatever. But bringing on someone like this is like, a lot of people don't know the difference between endorsing, platforming, and having discussions. Which is just really sad. The past day or so made me realize something also about Ian's situation. People are talking about how he never spoke on it when denouncing his past community. I think the only reason we knew about it is because uh, his wife, Anissa, went into it, um, more detail about his change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that the reality is that like I, I for anyone who doesn't know I have a podcast with um, Ian's wife Anissa and she's just like the most amazing person ever she's she's just absolutely amazing she's like I can't say enough nice things about her like that's that's how much I love her she's really really amazing we do the podcast on Casey Tron's channel on Mondays for anyone who doesn't know it's called The Take um, so it's really cool and I've had a, a, a I've had a really cool opportunity to see a lot of the the back end stuff. And Anissa's even spoken about like how she, Ian doesn't talk about this stuff because he doesn't want people to think that like he's doing this for himself or that he's doing this as like a PR stunt or any of that shit. Um, and talking about it... Um, It makes him concerned that people will think that he's just trying to get like sympathy points or whatever. Um, he's just trying to take accountability for his audience. He's not trying to do anything else. Because he considers himself being as being responsible for what he created on YouTube for a little bit. What he created with his like audience. And he just wants to take accountability for it. He's going to come out with like a video eventually talking about it from his perspective a little bit better. But this is just like the, the beginning, which is really cool. Um, I know you have a podcast. Yeah, I do. We do it on Mondays. First time I heard. Yeah, sorry. I, I tweet about it. Um... We do a podcast on Mondays. It's me, Casey Tron, and Anissa, and it's really cool. So yeah. Um, okay. What what's up? Oh, thank you, Zad. Thank you. Okay. All right. Can you shout out Casey? Yeah. Here we go. Oops, I spelled it wrong, Jesus Christ. Oh my god. All right, there we go. Okay, so we'll get back into it. You got to pick and choose what you're confident about, right? But you go through a filter process of this might be a dumb idea now? Yeah, that's how the human brain works, I think. <laughs> a Not everyone. One. A healthy brain? The people commenting right now, some of them, they don't have the filter. Yeah, but they should start, <laughs> they should refine that filter. They should build upon it. So when I first asked you to be on this show like a year ago, you said that you were 
in a transitional uh, It'll point. be available in other places for now. It's just a Twitch VOD. But very soon, I'm hoping that we'll have it on YouTube and we'll have it on other places as well. We just have been really, the three of us have been really busy lately. So we haven't sorted it all out. But it's going to be posted in other places too. And we've only had like two episodes. So we're still working everything out. But very soon, clips will be uploaded. VODs will be uploaded. Everything will be uploaded where you like to watch podcasts, which I'm very excited about. Points in your YouTube career. Yeah. Before, when you messaged me, yeah. I was simply a keyboard warrior. I would record videos in my room primarily about uh, other people. Yeah, I would be critical a lot of the time. That's where I, I guess, sort of got some of my notoriety from. Because uh, it's very easy to do. You just sit on your computer, you, f you watch a ton of... Am I allowed to cuss on this? Yeah, oh, cuss a f ton, please. Okay, cool. If it's not going to be bleeped, would... though, is it? Uh, it's going to be bleeped, but then there's going to be a version for members only that <laughs> was unbleeped. Sick. Awesome, okay. I made a video about uh, Keemstar, mm -hmm. and it was very well-deserved criticism, and it was like no one was doing that. I was like, this guy's a complete asshole. No one was criticizing Keemstar? No. I think everyone in the world has beef with him. Oh, yeah, at this I point. I have beef with him. At this point, yeah, sure. But everyone. at the time, no one no one was I doing mean, it. I just got, For like, fuck's sake, it's at the point now where, like, if you see Keemstar side with someone, you know that guy is wrong. Like, if Keemstar, he's had one good take in the past, I don't know how long, which has been the trans men take, and that's it. Whereas literally everyone else, like like literally anything else he says, if if he likes you, you made a mistake. Okay. If if Keemstar ever responds to my tweet saying based, I'm deleting the tweet and I'm apologizing immediately. Immediately, because I know I, it's like my litmus test for knowing that I fucked up. You know. It's like if it's like it's like Nick Fuentes, dude. Like if Nick Fuentes likes your post and says based, you've made a terrible mistake. You've made a terrible mistake somewhere. Somewhere in your tweet there was a mistake and you need to remove it immediately. Okay? I got up with it and I was just like I should make a video about this guy and uh a lot of people I think for them it was like um relatable and also a little bit cathartic to be like oh finally someone's you know talking about the shit that you know i've been seeing him do for the longest time like this you know feels a little good and i i, th I think it's valid i think there's totally a place for it i've sort of just personally i think outgrown it and during that time i was like uh a year ago when you asked me i was like well, I'm doing this boxing match, you know. Mm. I'm I'm not going to be chatting shit at anyone, really. I'm just going to have to fight in the ring, right? you know, put it all out there. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. That was sort of the transitional period. I was probably, like, more unhappy with my um, experience at the time uh, making these types of videos because I didn't really have much, like, of a like a community or like a friend group. I did have a, a friend group in the form of uh, Max Mofo, Filthy Frank, uh, Chad, How To Basic. Those guys were all great to hang out with and make videos with. And that was probably the most like fun part of my uh, uh, experience on YouTube was hanging out with those guys. And I, w I would probably keep going in that path if, if not for, you know, uh, us all living in like different continents. I think generally it was just kind of like wanting a little bit more, something was a little bit more rewarding, fulfilling. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why I like started to you know move away from it. And you've said that anyone who focuses their entire career on making edgy content, edgy jokes, eventually finds themselves wanting to to do something more fulfilling with their lives. Totally. What is the fulfilling thing now? I don't know. Making things that are rewarding in more than one aspect. I, I really like, I've been enjoying uh, making projects. Uh, right, like, yeah. Like arts be... and crafts. I made this like fidget toy. Yeah. That you the, pop the zits Thanos out of. colorful zits. Yes. Oh yeah. That was so much fun to do. <laughs> uh, I have a ton of other ideas like that, but it's not the reason people started following my channel. I think when I would make uh, like a content copy. Oh my video, God, I like it so much. For example, it would be like, you know, a month of work or something like that. And I would grind on this video. I'd write, you know, interesting points or whatever, write some s s some uh, sketches. 
It was just like anticipation for the day that I'm going to upload it. And I upload it. And for those 24 hours, it's like, oh, cool. There's the a lot of comments. I mean the the video circulating <laughs> a lot. It's like a dopamine rush. Yeah, it's a big rush. It's a big hit. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll have other creators messaging you saying like, oh, this is so awesome. I, you know. I've been wanting to have someone make a video about Keemstar for ages. That guy's such an asshole. And it feels good and rewarding for like 24, 48 hours. And then it's kind of like, all right, like that wasn't, it really didn't do much of anything. It's not like you impacted the world in any mm -hmm. sort of way. You know, Keemstar's still way. doing, yeah, what he's doing. It's just like entertainment. It's kind of like a, a similar impact to like bad reality TV where it's like, well, that was entertaining. But it's disposable. Yeah. In your joke police video, you said, hey, dumbass, you did something stupid in the past. You could be criticized for it. Mm -hmm. So do you welcome that same kind of criticism back at uh, you? Totally. Yeah. I, I think it's valid. Just like, uh, I guess, like Keemstar, Jinx, or whoever I made videos about, you know, they're completely valid in saying, you know, like, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it. <laughs> Not that Keemstar has ever said that. <laughs> that would be very vulnerable. Yeah, but yeah, it would, I, it would, be, it would be nice if he, if he did, for sure. Have you felt the need to apologize to anyone that you've talked shit to in, in your videos? Um, there have been some moments where it, it was made very real to me that I, I am making a, an impact in the world and it's not always positive. Mm -hmm. uh, after the Fine Brothers situation with, the, you know, them making react something. I sort of jumped on the bandwagon and I, I regret doing it because I didn't really have much to contribute to the conversation. I don't know, I was in pretty bad taste. It was just like, you know, I was saying either the same shit that anyone else was saying or just generally making fun of them. I'm sure it was entertaining for, you know, some people. So mm -hmm. mission accomplished on that front. But when I go to VidCon and the fine bros are there, it's kind of like, yeah, hey man, no hard feelings, right? It's shitty. I actually felt the need to apologize to uh, a very popular creator that I talk shit to online publicly in a video oh. recently. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you mind sharing? <laughs> yeah, sure. There was, you know, the time period of 2017, 2018, where it was so, popular to make videos criticizing people so i i did i spent a day with jake Pollers, and i was like i'm gonna bring in his fans and kind of ask them questions about why they like him and you know i kind of got the point across where it was like they liked him because he was obnoxious i guess and they didn't really know why otherwise and that was kind of the point of it and i remember you know i, I released it and i was kind of trying to prod a little bit so i i put this little clip on Twitter and tagged him in it and my girlfriend at the time okay but like it's deserved <laughs> okay like Jake Paul like listen it's deserved okay there are shitty people that like you can call them out and that's fine and then there are people that you shouldn't call out I think it's fine I published the VOD um I don't know why on my channel all of my VODs don't automatically publish and I don't know how to fix it. So I have to manually publish them. I don't know why. The Paul Brothers, you can go as hard as you want on them. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But I do agree that like even I find myself kind of guilty of it that I... I have found myself going pretty hard on creators before and I'm trying to like my... I haven't talked about it publicly until I guess right now because... I, I don't know, because I didn't think it was pertinent, but I have felt that like I've gone a little too hard on content creators before and I have not been espousing values that I think are good. So I've been trying to be better about it because I know that I, I could always be a little bit better as well, you know? I was like, yeah, but what was the, what was the point of, what was the point of it? And I was like, to, um, to show that, uh, I couldn't think of anything because it was like, people already talk shit. Yeah. What am I contributing to this? He got super pissed about it and he DM'd me and called me an imbecile and he went on <laughs> uh, his brother's podcast, Logan's podcast and pulled up the clip and he he talked shit about me back. Says I don't want to just like be another like Anthony Padilla that was like on Smosh. <laughs> it's an angst of um, someone who once was becoming irrelevant and being angry that the new generation is is being received more than themselves. That was kind of a rush too. It was like, ooh, we're both talking shit about each other. And that kind of just sat with me for a while. Please don't, please don't, please don't like, step on every single key. Actually didn't key. feel that Every good. single key so on the keyboard. I reached every out to him recently and, and I finally responded to him and it's like five years later and I was like, 
hey, sorry, you know, I was coming from a point where I was really lost. I oh had left Smosh. I, I didn't know what to do with myself and my career. And it was really popular to uh, commentate and talk shit about people. You were just right there front and center of everyone talking shit about you. And I felt like, you know, that was my thing was to contribute in that way. And he actually responded and he was like, hey man, no hard feelings, I get it. You know, we, we can all grow from from things that we uh, did and said in our past. It was so amicable in a way. I felt like this, I felt this, this release of tension that I didn't know I was holding in the back of my head of this kind of guilt of just randomly punching down. Yeah. And uh, overall, would highly recommend 10 out of 10. Yeah, <laughs> it, it makes a difference to be uh, bestie, very uh, vulnerable. Uh, bestie, you were not punching down by insulting Jake Paul, okay? You don't have to feel bad. Okay? I'm in shock that a cat just let you give them a raspberry and didn't claw your face. Dude, cats are very sweet animals, okay? There are lots of really sweet cats, okay? But anyways, yeah. You don't have to have sympathy for the Pauls, dude. They literally scammed their audience with, with fucking crypto. You can go as hard as you want on the, the on the Paul brothers. <laughs> okay? It's open season. That is not punching down. <laughs> it Maybe intellectually it's punching down. Like, literally go in. With Paul? Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of, like, what maybe a lot of, like, commentary channels. That's certainly something that I was, like you know, having a hard time with, like, being vulnerable. Even this, like, interview is, like, very... It's it's still difficult for me to do because I'm like, I don't want to talk about my life, my personal life. Uh, that's less to do with... Uh, it, I would say it's just more of, like, a content strategy or, like, being online strategy. Do you think that came from talking shit about others? You didn't want to be a target yourself and you didn't give them any, any ammunition? Of course. And that made a, a huge difference. I would say that... You know, a lot of the people who wanted to chat shit back, it's like, yeah, you can't really say too much. You know, this interview is an example of that. It's like plenty of people can reference it and be like, oh, see, you said this here. Mm. What about that? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm at the point in my oh life my God, where I'm hi, fine Amir. with it. Hi, Dude, Frogan says such nice things about you all the time. And plenty of it is like, you know, uh, well-deserved. Like, you know, if I'm going to put some negativity out in the world, like... It's very understandable Look at that her I would have in her casuals have it come with back. that beautiful Another hair. Typical queer woman of color, up, always um, eating, not leaving a single crumb with her fine ass. The goddess is goddessing for real. She better work. Bri, you will love God's 131 bites. Thank you, Miss Sana. Thank you. Um, yeah. Instead, people attack him through and you say it's really sad. Hi, Olivia. It's really sad. It's really sad. Um, most people. It's really cool because there are still lots of people in their corner, but there are so many people that are just so gross all the time. And, and like, it's so evident, like, that, like, IDubs made the right decision, that Ian made the right decision um, to, like, move away from it. Because for the record, people, for the, for the people that haven't seen it, the reason we're watching this is because, unfortunately, it became, like, a huge, this, that I have. this clip has circulated everywhere on the internet and people are being so fucking vile. People are literally just being vile because they were called out for being edge lords. I did not. Like right, we're gonna get to this eventually, but I want to talk about I it right had now. With fans, there were quite a few human beings that I interacted with that just sucked because I attracted a lot of people who sucked. Some people were very much like antisocial, weird basement dwellers. You know, the one time a month that they come out of their cave and they run into me, their favorite YouTuber. And what would they say? What would they do? Things that I am certainly not gonna repeat. <laughs> I'm talking bad words. Words that we only say by describing the first letter? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. that, boy, man, what a powerful way of putting it. <laughs> I didn't- Why does the TikTok sound effect, why is it always so loud? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Uh, Duo Max, thank you for the two months of Prime. Mumble Cat, thank you for the gift to Amir. Um, like he literally opened up about this and he talked about like, I was just tired of people in my audience that I would meet, that I would meet at like these like conventions or I would meet them in the real world or I would meet them in like fan meetups and they're all terrible people. No way. <laughs> Wait a minute. Like I attracted a bunch of racist people by being racist. Jesus. 
And people are like, dude is a jerk. And people are being like so rude about it. And the sad thing is that like, I'm, I'm scared to free scroll on Twitter. I'm scared to free scroll. Hold up. Oh, okay. There are still lots of people that are being... Okay, okay, great. Um, But yeah, so he's talked about it. And like, it's really sad to see so many people who... Instead of... Like... A lot of people end up just going for his wife and attacking his wife for some reason. I don't understand why. I really don't. But yeah, we're, we're, I want to finish the video. Though. Kind of guiding the path a little bit. I did not like the interactions that I had with fans. There were quite also, a yeah, few. Also, yeah, everybody already called it out. But the, the oh, oh my God, I can't believe the clip was literally when I pressed play. I can't believe I paused to get into a stun lock about the video I was watching just for the next section to be exactly what. Oh, my Lord Christ almighty. Jesus Christ. Fucking average streamer L. <laughs> just fucking, let's just watch it again and then, and then we'll move on. We'll talk about this human beings that I interacted with in person that, yeah in person that just sucked Ooh. they just sucked because I attracted a lot of people who sucked some people were as I described earlier were very much like antisocial, weird basement dwellers and you know the one time a month that they come out of their cave is going to restock on supplies at Walmart and they run into me their favorite youtuber which is kind of the lifestyle you were living in yeah time. exactly <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, I don't blame them. <laughs> and what would they say? What would they do? Things that I am certainly not going to repeat. <laughs> I'm talking bad words, fringy behavior that like maybe I do in a video because I, I got a camera pointed at me. There'd be some of that energy matched in person. And it's like, oh, maybe not. So when you were on camera doing it, you felt like it was just for comedy, for entertainment. Yeah, I mean, generally, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it's just like, it's just antisocial weird behavior. Surely you've had... I wanted to share with you guys something very, very, very topical. I watched, I rewatched Mean Girls yesterday. I rewatched Mean Girls yesterday for the first time in probably a decade. I haven't seen it in a long time. And I did not think Mean Girls was going to hold up. I watched it and I was like, it's not going to hold up, but let's go. Let's rewatch it, you know? And it holds up. It still holds up. I actually couldn't believe it. I don't know if it would hold up for everyone. It's like, obviously it holds up for me because the experience is sort of like an exaggerated caricature of what I experienced a little bit growing up. And they've got some amazing actors in there. Uh, Amy Poehler's there. Tina Fey is there. Uh, Lindsay Lohan's there. They, they, all of the mean girls in, in the movie are, as well are like really, they're all amazing actresses. They really play their role. It's amazing. It's really, really good. Um, and it's very entertaining. You know, they don't even make movies um, anymore like that. They don't do it. <laughs> they don't make movies that good anymore. <laughs> now movies are so boring. They take forever. There's some convoluted plot that you never get to. And then the movie just kind of ends, you know? Um, and so I have to say they, they did it. They did a great job. It was really entertaining. Like that was... Were you a plastic or a Lindsay Lohan? Dude, I was like a fucking nerd, okay? I was I was the art nerd, okay? I I had a group of like five or six friends and we all spent lunch drawing anime, okay? So I was definitely like a nerd, okay? <laughs> that was not like, that was never, it was never anything else. <laughs> Just like me for real. <laughs> Just like me for real. Um, but anywho, what was I what was I trying to talk about? Every comedy film on Netflix nowadays, they're all fucking mid. It sucks. They literally they suck so bad. That's why I like you. Literally, like I was that was me, okay? Lindsay Lohan gets judged for alcohol and drug problems in the real world. Her acting skills shouldn't be put down. She was a, she's an amazing actress. She was an amazing actress, dude. Um but also certain things that I watched before that weren't funny were so funny watching them this time around. Like when they give the burn book to the to the principal and the principal's like, Coach Carr is having sex with the girls? <laughs> like that's what he cares about. And the girl's like, yeah, but like look at all the other things in there. Isn't that so mean? <laughs> It's really funny because like when I watched it as a kid, I didn't really get it. I was like, oh, okay. Watching it as an adult, it was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about this plot point. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I'm giving a spoiler for a 10-year-old movie. Oh no. <laughs> but what was I? I brought this up for a very specific reason. Um, I brought it up to bring up something. Wait. I, I brought it up for a specific reason. Think, Denim, come on. I remember. So the, there's a scene where, like, there are the two, um, the two main friends. I don't remember their names. The characters who are friends with Lindsay Lohan's character. The the black haired emo chick and then like the gay guy. That's it. That's that's those are the two characters. I don't remember anyone's name. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Damien and Janice. And Janice says, like, oh, he's almost too gay to function. And then she writes it in the book. The other chick writes it in the book and she's like, Oh my god, wait, is that only okay when Janice says it? And I would say that's very similar to what we're watching right now, where like when you're using satirical language in a very specific context, it's acceptable. So, for example, um, maybe if you are someone who is queer and you're in a queer space, nobody cares that you're using the F slur. Right? Because everyone there knows that you're an ally. You're part of the community. If anything, more, more importantly, you're part of the community. Everyone there uses it. Like every single, and maybe this is just the, the gay people that I've met, every single gay person I've met uses the word and they think it's very funny they think it's really really funny and so if i'm in these spaces i'm not straight i can use this word and nobody cares like literally i don't i don't use it in general because i don't i try not to use language that i might use on stream and if i said it on stream i would instantly get canceled but no i have yet to meet a single gay person in my life that cares that other people in the community use the word because everyone knows that you're all on the same side however there's a huge difference between saying that in that specific context around those people and everyone knows what you mean versus going and just saying it in the wild, right? Is being too gay to function what Austin show suffers from? Yeah, yeah. And so like maybe Ian will make a video satirizing something and he'll use racist language while he's satirizing it. And then now he has a bunch of like dumb fuck morons that follow him and they start saying it in public so maybe he had a whole joke and a setup and a punchline and a context where all of it mattered and made sense and then his audience members just fucking run around the street saying this shit and it's like you what is happening <laughs> what is going on man what is going on uh, on Twitter, the girlies love to tell bi pan women that they can't say the D word, the slur one. It's so stupid. It's so cringe. So cringe. There's some older people in the community that were actually bullied using that word. So it's more young people who reclaimed it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ian wasn't really satirizing. He was using it for shock value based on the idea that people can't say the word because it gives it power. Yeah. But maybe he's using it specifically in a very specific way and then everybody i'm not saying that i'm not excusing his behavior i'm not saying that like oh in context it was okay i'm not saying that i'm not i'm not saying that okay i'm saying that there is a huge difference between a content creator saying something and it's in this entire video that has all this other stuff in it where maybe this joke might be funny and everyone just going around saying slurs very very different Again, not to say that his context before was correct or that it was good or that it was acceptable. Okay, let's go. Let's go back. There'd be some of that energy matched in person. And I was like, oh, maybe not. So when you were on camera doing it, you felt like it was just for comedy, for entertainment? Yeah, I mean, generally, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it's just like, it's just antisocial weird behavior. Surely you've had some fans, like, quoting small shit yeah when they're like shut up and i'm like bro yeah. bro that was a yeah. lot i mean that's pretty much all i'm talking about but maybe <laughs> change funny. change the word shut up to something worse and then so words that we only say by describing the first letter yes this was this was i didn't really say it well thank you for putting it in better words than me um but this is what i was trying to explain because i my my wording wasn't great on it and i wanted to yeah, correct this. The IRL part of being an asshole to real minorities is a lot worse than making a random YouTube video. Exactly. Like, 
this guy making a video and you have to watch 10 minutes of the video for him to have a shock value slur in the middle of it is very different than your audience seeing this being like, that was so funny. I'm going to go up to random people and start calling them slurs. Very different. Both are bad. One is way worse. Obviously, one of them leads to the second one, and that's important. But like, at the very least, on the internet, it's like, okay, this is just on the internet. Everyone can misbehave on the internet. But then it emboldens some fucking weirdos to do this other shit. Does that make sense, Trap? I hope that explains the position a little bit better. Because I'm not excusing the behavior. In fact, I don't even think Ian himself would excuse the behavior. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the point of man. Oh, chat. I told. I don't know if I told you guys. Uh, I don't know how many people were here. Um, I am gonna have a. I'm not getting one guide anymore. I'm not getting one guide at all anymore. At at all. At even a little. Um, and from now on, I'm just gonna have a zero tolerance policy because I think it works better. So, if you get banned and you feel like you were banned wrongfully, you're welcome to put an unban request in, and you know send an essay if you want to send an essay but i'm just not doing it anymore and i know what you guys are thinking this is copium this is copium no i think that it ruins the stream i think getting one guide too hard ruins the stream so i'm not doing it anymore i'm still gonna roast people because like look at this fucking dipshit we're talking about atrioc <laughs> we're talking about fucking atrioc and we're discussing like how people can change and improve just because you change doesn't mean people have to accept you are you is your name god are you judge, jury, and executioner? Get the fuck off your high horse. You're literally a Twitch chatter. Okay? Goodbye. Back to the video. And so now all chat will be treated that way. Good faith me is gone. Okay? Too many people have abused it. And now it's gone. If you send out a, a message that's super rude, you're gone. That's it. You're done. You're done. Mm-mm. I was so good faith to that one person. And after that, I spent so much time interacting with them to try and get them to change their opinion. And then they just became a huge asshole after that. Gloves are off. Iron fist from now on. Okay. If you send some messages and you are not trying to understand my point at all, at all, at all. And you're like, I say something and I'm trying to make it clear. And you're like, what the fuck was that take? Goodbye. Goodbye. You don't like it? Leave. Okay. We're done. Mm -mm, we're done. And what a powerful way of putting it. <laughs> but, but they would hear you uh, ironically using language like that. Uh -huh. And then they would throw it back at you unironically. Yeah. After having enough of those experiences and being like, these are the people that I'm attracting. These are the people that I'm entertaining. Mm. Like, I need to reevaluate things. They are relating and enjoying this content for a reason. And... Exactly. So, like, thank you so much. So, this is, like, th this is why I banned that chatter. Because they aren't willing to, like think for two seconds and use their brain even for two seconds when this is what I'm talking about. As a former cringe edgelord, I think a lot of us thought that people were in on the joke that edgy stuff were bad and that we were mocking it. We realized, oh, oh, wait, a lot of the people making these jokes actually believe the nasty edgy shit. Yes, exactly. Like, for example, chat, I would compare it. I would really, really, really compare it to like when we say like women, am I right? We're we're laughing at the fact that there are actually people who think that women are inferior. Like there are real dumb fucks walking around our planet today, right now, that think that women are less competent. I'm not saying that women are, like, I'm not talking about the people who are like, oh, but did you actually, did you know that women in general are weaker than men and shorter than men? Yes, yes, everybody knows that. You don't need to tell everybody that. Everybody already knows that, okay? You absolute shit for brains. Everyone knows that already, okay? I'm talking about the people who walk around and they're like, women can't code because estrogen. Women have to raise babies, cannot work outside because estrogen. Like those people, those, like when we say women, am I right? We're mocking those people. But we're all in on the joke and it's obvious that we're all in on the joke. Do you get what I mean? But then the problem is, if you make a joke like that and you never clarify that you're like a feminist, some people are going to laugh because it's absurd and other people are going to laugh because they agree. So if you use a word for shock value because you're saying like, LOL, can you believe that people are so racist that they think this? Or LOL, can you believe that people are so sexist that they think this? 
And then everyone else, there's like a chunk of your audience, a big chunk of your audience that has no idea what you mean. And then they run around and start saying these slurs to actual minorities. It's like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Isn't the whole point of human advancement that we got over the need for physical strength? Like, what do you need to be strong for in modern society? Moving your fridge? <laughs> Moving your, what, like moving boxes when, what, like what, what is your, what is the need for strength? <laughs> like literally you are way better off in society if you have social skills than if you have strength. Um, but anywho, woke banks failed because women exist. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's why you only make jokes around the people who know you and your stances. Exactly. I'm playing R2, R, sorry, R, oh, Red Dead Redemption 2 right now. And there's a mission where you fly a hot air balloon, but Sadie gets told she can't because she's a woman and her lungs aren't built for it. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord God, save me. Oh, man. I remember when I was on The Donald and it felt like a parody of Trump. And then maybe two, three months in, it became the main Trump setter, subreddit. It was a very visible shift from joke to real. Yes. Yes, it's so weird. It's so weird, dude. It's literally so weird. Um, but so that's what I was trying to say. I'm trying to say that like when he's making these videos in a context where he's trying to like joke about this and and he's not being clear about which position he's on, he's not being clear to tell people it's a joke, then you end up with a bunch of people in your community who don't get it or they're just bigoted. And that's it. You know? It's not maybe the same reason that I'm trying to make. I had a very Wild West mentality when it came to online uh, mm -hmm. behavior. Like, people are going to do what they want to do. People are going to say what they want to say. Um, and I can pretty much do the same because uh, it's the internet. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you have to be a lot more responsible. I mean, I feel like sitting here with you now and seeing who you've become, I mean, you feel like a different person. You feel like a different energy, for lack of a better term. Oh, I'm, I'm a totally different person. <laughs> all, all of the cells in my body have, have changed. Don't they change every, like, seven years? Yeah. And we're coming up on it. Yo, we're coming up you're on a different it. person entirely. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and my physique's different. Oh, yeah? You yeah. care to show off those guns? Uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> Oh, they're going to have to see the exclusive yeah, pay-per-view yeah. content right. of you boxing to know what the physique actually looks like under this very well-dressed man. Oh, thank you. Some people think that you getting married is what actually entirely changed you. No, I mean, I got married to Anissa, I want to say, what is that, five years into our relationship. Anissa helped me with, like, a lot of the videos that I think the fans have appreciated the most. Content cop? Uh, yeah, a lot of content cops, a lot of other random videos that I am still very proud of. Because I don't often talk about my personal life, I've sort of like disincluded uh, Anissa um, in, I guess, a lot of the uh, interviews and content that I've talked about over the years. And Denim's molding that Ian isn't single. First of all, I don't like mullets. Very big mistake. Second of all, incorrect. I'm molding that Anissa isn't single. Okay. That like, listen, okay. Listen, Ian, I respect you. You're cool. You would beat the shit out of me in boxing for sure. But when you out... gonna be white on rice okay bro i'm just that's all i'm gonna say okay just know her dms are not sacred okay i will be there i will be there immediately i just can't get on the mullet is back trend yeah i know i just don't i'm not i'm not a, i'm just not a mullet i'm just not a mullet fan Is that something that and, I, and this I is this is coming from someone who thinks that the mullet actually looks good on him. I think he actually rocks the mullet. I think it looks good, but I just don't. I just I'm just bigoted against the mullet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Definitely regret because she's the complete opposite. She's like open book. She'll stream and she'll talk about her entire day. I think a lot of people get angry or frustrated or they doubt her because they haven't heard it from me. But you know everything. Like she's my partner. You know, everything that she says, like, you Aww. know, for the most part, I'm down with. I'm getting to the point where I'm, like, a lot more comfortable about it. And I think it, it does more good than harm to mm -hmm. uh, just be more of an open book.
you've been very private with the details that you have talked about publicly. Have you ever talked about your childhood? I feel like I haven't really seen much about, you know, how you became iDubs. I grew up uh, in Southern California. Uh, I have an older sister. Mm -hmm. um, I was raised by a single mother till I was 10-ish. I made a lot of friends with like uh, the weird kids. Um, they were actually not weird. They were guys who were also raised by single mothers. Mm. Uh, they were a little bit more, I would say, that they just weren't assholes. Oh, um, they had, had some sense of empathy? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think we related in a lot of ways, but I don't think we realized that it was most likely because we were raised in a, a single uh, parent household. My dad uh, was in prison, so he came back when I was around nine or 10. Mm. Uh, so like he wasn't in my life for a period. What was it like reconnecting with a parent, you know, bringing them back into your life when they technically were a stranger? I, th I think the biggest thing is just like how different fathers want to raise their sons. Well, like, it's like, come on, we're going to go throw the pigskin, son. That kind of shit. Was it a lot amplify of like, that maybe a little bit. How, like, how amplified did it get? Gender role type shit uh -huh. and like what ha an idea of how men need to be. And, you know, being raised by a single mother, like I didn't really fit a lot of those, uh, those norms or those ideas. Chores is a good example. Like what does a guy do for chores versus a woman? Do you have any ideas? Also, before we go on this, I wanted to talk about the partner thing. Um, I wanted to talk about two things. First off, um, oh, the tweet was deleted. Oh my God. It's, that's so stupid. This fucking loser deleted his tweet. This one fucking loser on Twitter was like, he was responding to the, the main tweet talking about like, um, it just, it was the clip from, from Ian on, uh, Anthony Padilla. And they were like, um, honestly, it's kind of weird that you feel the need to comment so much on your husband. Why not just let Ian talk for himself? Why not just let Ian speak for himself? Why do you constantly feel the need to talk for him? Um, and then there was this, <laughs> just because I wasn't in the spotlight doesn't mean I also bear responsibility and I have opinions on it. We were a team and I collaborated with him on controversial content. And then there's, I can't imagine a marriage being a partnership that's disgusting speaking for you or your significant other because you know out of everyone exactly how they feel and think about the events you were literally there for and helped curate. Unbelievable. Like people literally just don't understand marriage. Like they literally don't understand that like some people who get married actually like their partner and they're actually on the same page as their partner. I know, crazy. Crazy that you would get married to someone that's your best friend and you actually know how they feel about things so you feel comfortable speaking about it. That's crazy. Personally, me, I would only ever get married to someone that I fucking hated and I didn't know anything about. That's what I would do because, yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so dumb. Um, but I just wanted to talk about that because, yeah. And they're all, both very open about everything. I really wish people understand that in the clip, Ian is saying he attracted those type of people. It means he attracted them because of the content that he was making. A mirror was held up and he started his long journey of serious self-reflection, me as well. That being said, I understand if people choose not to like either of us. We've done serious damage, made things that genuinely make people cr personally cringe out of my skin. I want people to at least just understand the context. I don't. I understand if people don't like us. And I think that's a pretty good summary. I think that's a pretty good summary. Yeah, take out the trash. Oh, because uh, men are gross. Because they're they gross. Love, they, they love rolling around in they shit. They stink. Facts. What else? Uh, the yard work, because they get in the dirt. It's also dangerous. Oh, in it's the dangerous. Yard. Yeah. You know, Pete, you can get stolen, kidnapped. Oh, yeah. Who True. knows? But if you're a man, you're not going to get kidnapped. Mm -mm. Impossible. No one wants to human traffic you. Yeah, because you got a dick. That's right. And balls. One memory that I had, I liked reptiles. I liked animals growing yeah, up. Yeah, you're into amphibians and shit. Before yeah. anyone says that that's transphobic, they are literally making fun of like the hyper masculine people who are transphobic, you know? So before anyone's like, um, stop, that was really, that's, they're making fun of those people. They're making fun of the fact that those people, of course, the type of people who think that like, men are supposed to do yard work and women are supposed to do dishes. Of course, those people would also be transphobic. Yeah, amphibians. Yeah. <laughs> My dad and I. <laughs> what 
is this? I hate when you're doing yard work and you accidentally step on a landmine that was part of your home defense. People who play Seven Days to Die, you recognize. Re real recognize real. I went to a reptile store, but like I was kind of thinking maybe I wanted a snake. But it had like a little cute nose. It was all, you know, it, you know, it wasn't one of those like evil fucking diamond shaped heads. Right. That look like they're gonna fucking snap you. And uh, <laughs> I was like, that one's pretty cool. But yeah. my dad was there. There was a little pressure there to get the one, to get the snake that my dad was a little vibing with a little Oh, the bit scarier more. one. The one that was like, you know, maybe a few feet longer. <laughs> yeah. It was a little bit bigger around. So we, of course we got that one. Yeah. And we had that snake in my room. <laughs> you were just like scared of it in the corner? <laughs> I mean, pretty much. <laughs> the, the top of the enclosure was just like essentially a screen door. Yeah. That just like kind of pressed in. And this snake was big. Uh -huh. So that sucker would just push that screen door open and just leave at will. And one time it, it, it was out of the cage and it wrapped itself around the bottom like leg of the dresser that was on. So there was like a situation where it was like, okay, I'm lifting up the dresser so my dad can go in there and get the snake. My dad gets bitten while he's under there. I'm shocked, so I fucking like dropped the dresser. Yeah. Which wasn't a great reaction. But yeah, he, he exploded on me and like didn't really, uh, you know, de definitely made me feel bad for uh, reacting the way that I did. Mm -hmm. And that was like, that, that was a memory that I had because it was just very, uh, it was a lot. And it was like with a thing that I didn't even want to be uh, friends with the snake. <laughs> yeah. There was a disconnect there. What about your, your your living situation growing up? We lived in a trailer park for the first, like, I don't know. What the? Sorry, I was focused on the video and for some reason some person isn't focused on the video and they just want to be annoying. What is this? My mother died in a left wing echo chamber. You shit lord. Asterisk leaves chair in faint shock, then returns looking like I just really need to empty my bowels. You know the saddest thing? This guy really thought he was cooking and he sent it twice. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was cooking. He was cooking nothing, dude. He was cooking nothing. Bro, that first message. If I had sent that first message, I would be Googling how delete first message in Twitch chat. Mistake made. <laughs> Oh, Lord Jesus fucking Christ. Yes, um, seven or eight years mm -hmm. uh, when my dad got <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, <laughs> Boiling water and let that shit evaporate all the way. chatters dude oh god jesus all right let's let's finish this and then i'm really excited because i want to i want to i don't really mind these but i really want to watch the creator clash segment okay out of prison that's when we were able to like move into a, like a proper house my mom had a lot to deal with but it amazes me that like she was able to be a single mom with a husband that she's still like you know in contact with and like you know occasionally visiting in prison mm. and raising two kids it's like i like i get f worried about getting like a second dog like everyone yeah. is having yeah. a yeah. so stupid park. you mentioned to me that some people talk shit about you and they're like trailer park this and that. you're like mm -hmm. literally yeah i mean it's true i don't like uh i guess necessarily identify it uh, with it too much because it's like i don't know it's i blot a lot of that out in my memory. And I also don't interpret it as bad as it maybe was. Uh, that's yeah. something that Anise has gone to like therapy a number of times and she says to me like, it could be like a lot worse than you know because when people have trauma and people have like bad experiences, like especially in childhood, you just don't remember it. And a lot of times you need to, your brain needs to do that to survive, so. Yeah. Literally, that's, yeah. that's all the coping mechanisms that we develop as children are to make those experiences not feel traumatic, mm. even though they, they, they might sit with us for the rest of our lives. Totally. Unless we process it. Okay.
there was a huge creator clash announcement. I don't know if you guys saw it, but I want to watch this section really quickly. And then I want to show you guys. Has anyone seen it? Has anyone? No spoilers in chat. Have you guys seen the new announcement? Who's fighting? I don't even care about boxing, but I'm just excited. <laughs> Has anyone seen it? One's in chat if you see it. Two's if you haven't seen it. Of damage. Like, if you True. got a black guy. I'm going to show yeah. you guys you in a second. You look so hard. Kind of sexy. It's like, he's yeah. seen some You don't want to get swollen, though. No, no, no. That you, you don't want to change the shape of the face. You just want some, you know, accents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get some cuts. Yeah, that video that you made right afterwards where you had two black guys. I was like, you know. This iDubs guy, kind of looking a little uh, sexy, I you say so. <laughs> that, I did not look good in that video. But you had some battle rain. rings, bro. I looked like a fucking, uh, like a Navi, like an avatar creature. I think, <laughs> I honestly think if you got into boxing, you'd love it. I mean, I've done some boxing classes and really enjoyed it. I, and I could definitely see the allure. Wait, I have a question. Who would you have put me up against if I had said, yes, that sounds great. I'd love to get hit in the face. Um, so what we usually do is we would get your height and your weight, uh -huh. and then we would find someone near your height and your weight. 5'11", 175. Yeah. And then we would pitch opponents to you. Odd one's out. I could take him. James definitely wants to fight. So like, <laughs> really? Yeah, uh, no, could, if you wanted it, we dude, could I wish I, I wish I was brave enough to fight. I'm not. I'm, I'm too scared of the potential negatives. I'm way too scared of, like, getting a concussion to ever do it, which is sad because it's like, it's so cool that so many people are in the boxing sphere. Definitely make that happen for uh, next year, hands down. I'm not committing right now. That's fine. But you have to be confident about who you're fighting. I feel, I feel pretty confident about yeah. taking James out. That's, <laughs> I, li I like that. Yeah, I'm, not I like I'm not that. saying anything. I'm just putting a little uh, seed out there. We'll see what happens oh, with it. Oh, that's good. We'll see what happens. Wow. I'm not Anthony, getting into mindset. Respect. I'm just respect, putting a seed. I'm, hey, hey, hey. That makes it look official. <laughs> there was just a seed. <laughs> All right. We'll see what happens. I like a seed because that's, that's it, right? Like, yeah. I never wanted to do this shit. Ricegum called me out to box in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I said no. Or I, I didn't say anything. Because yeah. I didn't, I didn't want to look like a <laughs> You're not going to say no. Yeah. Not publicly. Right. Enough time had passed and I had gained enough confidence myself and became comfortable with the idea that I was like, oh yeah, of course. I will destroy him. Unfortunately, it didn't go that way. I was paired up with Dr. Mike. When you went out there to fight with Dr. Mike, you were the headliner. Yeah. You know, you, you didn't just put together a boxing match with creators and, you know, watch from the sidelines and, and reap the benefit. I mean, there's two things there. It was for charity, which was amazing. You raised over a well, million dollars. And I have to say that- Also, this is another thing that people just don't know. People don't know the Creator Clash events don't go to their pockets. It's literally come watch content creators get punched so we can raise money for other people. And people don't know that. I didn't even know this. I didn't even know this until like recently they the money goes directly to charities and if you want to see more about the charities just just go to the, the creatorclash.com and you can read all about them which is which is crazy cool it's so cool people uh, give me a lot of credit for putting this event together mm -hmm. um anisa is like the big brain behind it all mm -hmm. and uh she does a lot uh right. she does you know most of the work with the other fighters. Uh, she finds mm -hmm. coaches for people. Boxing coaches are like notoriously hard to work with because they're tough. They, you know, you know, you ask any, you know, boxing coach, hey, we plan on doing this creator boxing event and they're gonna, f and they're gonna think you're a total joke. Like, mm -hmm. no, like boxing isn't a game. You can't just take it up casually. Honestly, like Anissa doesn't get, a, get enough credit for how much she, she does for the the whole show. She, Were you expecting people to want to come back the next year after this? Not at all. I, I thought everyone who lost would definitely not want to come back. Mm. Uh, people who won might want to do it, but what ended up happening was pretty much everyone except Michael Reeves and Graham Stephan wanted to come mm -hmm. back. How is this year's Creator Clash going to be Which different? is so cool. Than last year's. All of the fighters are have had uh, much more time to prepare We've made sure that every fighter has a legit coach. We have uh, more female fights. We have three female fights and they're in three different weight classes. Mm. Also, this this is part of the spoiler. Okay, this is part of the spoiler. They got 
two two fighters had to drop out. One of them suffered a, I believe, a concussion, and they were not able to heal soon enough to the Creator Clash event, so they dropped out, and that fight was dropped, and a new fight was announced. You think I said no the, spoilers! The, training, the physical training has translated to, you know, mental, emotional, internal states. I have, like, so many cool boxing content ideas. Mm -hmm. Um... And now that I've done it, I'm like, oh, you don't have time or energy to make, to do anything other oh, than thank boxing. thank you, Tara. There's just like a lot of things that I've had to learn along the way. Like, uh, my coach is a tough ass guy. Dude, you these know, coaches are like, no joke. I could not, I could not do boxing. The coaches are too, they're too strong. Okay, what I did want to show you guys was this. Buckle in chat. Let's take this outside. Dude. Dude! FR. This is the last fight I would ever expect to happen. This is legit the last, the last one I would ever, ever have expected to happen. Yes, it is post-leftism. I want this and I shouldn't. I know. I know. I don't know who these people are, but I hope they have a nice time. I don't know who these people are. <laughs> they look like the same person. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. I, I think it's really cool. So, yeah. Anyways, 